I'm going to show an example of uh, a more complex symbol where we've got referencing not just between contacts but between modular components. So I'm going to take this as an example, uh, an Allen Bradley um, vacuum uh, circuit breaker VD4. Um, the symbol itself is pretty huge but when we actually search down for the wiring information we can see that it's actually got, um, if I just rotate that, <coughs> a lot of different modules which can be used on this. So what we're going to do is create a device just to showing a couple of these pluggable options. So in C Electrical, what I'm going to do first of all is just create some symbols or grab some symbols which I'm going to use. Now in fact I'm going to wipe out all the intelligence stuff on these symbols anyway, so I'm just doing this for the graphics. So I'm taking these symbols. Uh, just as an example, I'm going to right click. Once I've selected them, choose Explode and then just remove all of the information that's on there really. I don't want any of that text information or the graphics. Uh, let's just put that graphic, that line back. So this is just um, graphical or line information. So <clears throat> once we've got those stripped down, uh, we can then put on information just so that um, you're only wiring essentially to the plugs. So we just need connection points at the top and the bottom. If we take this one perhaps as an example. So what we're going to do in C Electrical, I'll just switch back again. I've already created some of these and I've gone into uh, components, into construction, <coughs> and I've got a top plug. So it's going to zoom out. And it's got a bit of text there. This isn't an actual symbol, it's just the graphics with a connection point with a piece of text there. If I use Control E, I can see that that's set to be the sheet or cell reference. So that's my first point. I'm going to go to bottom plug and I'm going to put this in line, put this underneath. And then I'm going to put the graphics in between. This is um, just the graphic for the coil. And then I'm going to put a couple of these. And I'm going to put another top <coughs> plug uh, just by copying this one at the top and copy that across. Um, I've got some other dummy plug-in symbols which I'm going to have just there which can represent plugging into these. Now these just have text on them, they're not intelligent information. We don't need that. All we need to know for the Wyman is where they're plugged into at the ends. So I'm just going to put some graphical lines. These are not wires, these are graphical lines. And just show those all connected together. the longest bit <clears throat> and then I'm going to save that as a symbol and the type of symbol I'm going to choose I'm going to go to block and we'll save it as a multi switch so I click OK I can leave it as K1 that's fine or in fact if I just put in here that this is just <clears throat> Q question mark and now I can set those connection points so in the background if I just quickly check on here I'm going to put this one as being this one I've actually got an extra contact there but let's just pretend it's that so 31 30 and 41. 31. 30. And I've forgotten that one already. 41. So the key information here for this to work is that uh, <coughs> the connection point text and the type of symbol must match on both the uh, auxiliary and also on the main symbol. So I've now got this as a symbol. What I can call this is maybe if I just right click and add a new folder there for complex and I can just drag that onto there and I'll call it <coughs> uh, XP3 31 to 41. Just have that as an example. So I might have another one on there perhaps with a extra bits and uh, let's just choose some different connection points let's just say it's this one here which is 45 and 46 so let's have that as being 45 and 46 and I'm just going <coughs> to explode that and remove that bit there and then just save that again block it as a multi-switch Okay, so I'm going to drop that onto the complex one as XP3 45 to 46. <clears throat> so, what we can do now is save on this page 
we can save this as an actual complete symbol, as a reference. And then we can space these out wherever we like in the project. So I just put a box around it, window around the whole thing, and say block this as a component with auxiliary contacts. I click OK. I call it QB. And that's the device reference for the whole component. And what this means is, if I was to create a new page, place on one of these separate symbols, give it the same ID, which automatically picks up anyway, and I've got a reference back to page 10E, and here I've got a reference page 2. So it's now referencing this symbol here on the, the main. So I can put as many symbols as I like on here, make them as complicated as I like, as long as the remote symbol that I use has the same terminal markings, so in the same order, the same terminal markings, and is the same type of symbol. So, for instance, it's a multi-switch symbol in this case. Then you'll see they will cross-reference and they will work together. And the important information for the wireman in this situation is still the actual terminal information. Um, we do have some other examples. Let me just quickly show you. If I go to create a new page, if I show you this VD4 symbol. So this is the uh, VD4 Alan Bradley, uh, sorry, ABB. If I place it in, it's a huge symbol. This is used as a reference, and again, it's made up of multi switch symbols all placed in together and created as a complete component. So this is device ID or reference Q1, create a new page. And if I now place in one of the example ones here, for instance this one, zoom in. It's called Q1 and it's got the right terminal markings already. And so that references back to page 3. And I can see the reference being brought in here. So exactly the same concept, only on a much bigger scale.